All right, what's going on guys? So today we're gonna go over recovery methods, active and passive, to increase your ability to keep training and to minimize pain and overall fatigue. Let's get into it. All right, so the first ones we're gonna go over is the active therapy. So the active therapy is gonna be something that you're actually having to do. And by that definition, it's going to be something that you're actually having to do on your own. So what that means is that's gonna give you the ability to recover a lot faster. When you're talking about it from a systematic approach, we wanna make sure that we're taking into account what's going on with our body and then we wanna attack it and get it better so that you can keep on training and keep on producing performance enhancements. All right, so the first one that I would say that is probably gonna be the most effective in my opinion based on my experiences is the hot and cold contrast baths. Now, the reason why I say that is because you're gonna get basal dilation and vasoconstriction now that's going to help with pumping out blood and allowing your body to recover and drive nutrients into the working tissue or the worked tissue that is sore or beat up or whatever have you it's going to reduce inflammation and it's just going to make you feel better all over so again when it comes down to it my fighters my athletes even myself i like to work this in at least two times a week especially after hard training sessions now, with that being said, if you are working to increase muscular endurance or muscular strength and hypertrophy, you want to backload this off to the next day. You don't want to do it right after. You want to let your body kind of get through that inflammation and break down and help itself rebuild on its own so that you'll get a better adaptation from a hypertrophy standpoint. Now, if your main goal is to just recover, get a stimulus because you're getting close to competition, then this is something that you can do right after your training. So what you're going to do here is you're going to go with cold water at, at about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And then that hot water is gonna be right around 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're gonna first go into the hot water for three minutes long, jump right out of there, and then go one minute in the cold. You'll go back and forth for 20 minutes long, all right? Now, like I said, this is gonna be done at least two times a week, especially on or after those harder training sessions. All right, another thing that you can do from an active therapy standpoint is self myofascial release treatment. So with that, you're gonna decrease muscle tightness and overall pain in that tissue. All right, so what we're gonna do is either a foam roll through the larger muscles, whether that be the hamstrings, the quads, and then you're gonna lacrosse ball things like the piriformis. Right, so those are gonna be deeper, more inline tissue, isolated inside the body there. And you wanna make sure that if you're gonna do this, you're gonna do 10 to 15 minutes total, right? And this is gonna be post-training, right? You don't wanna spend a large amount of time before training. The only reason why I say that is because we wanna to get to the training, get it done, make sure we're getting that adaptation, and then after that, is when we wanna start working on increasing the recovery rate so that you can keep on training going further down the weeks. All right, so 10 to 15 minutes post-training, or you can also do it the day after your training to help you recover for the next training session after that. With passive therapy, now passive therapy, you definitely wanna make sure that you're going and seeing a qualified clinician. So someone who knows and is certified in Graston cupping, uh, you have dry needling, all these things, basically soft tissue work that is going to enhance recoverability. And again, you're working through ranges of motion that's going to enhance mobility and active end range control. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you this about one or two of the most important things that you need to manage is your sleep and your overall nutrition. So that goes without saying, but I just have to make sure I reiterate that. That's gonna be your primary basis on how you can recover. So proper sleep, you're looking at around eight to 12 hours of restful sleep a night. Your nutrition has to be managed throughout the intensities of the work being done. So if you have a large amount of time of training, whether it be 90 minutes to two hours, well, you know you're gonna have to go ahead and replenish your glycogen storages. So you're gonna have to take in some carbohydrates. You're definitely gonna have to take in some protein, right, to help replenish the muscle, okay? So for that, you have to make sure that your macronutrients and your micronutrients are scattered around appropriately throughout the day around your training time so that you can recover and fuel yourself for training performance. There it is, active therapy, 
passive therapy, I'm pretty sure I left some of those out, but these are the ones that I really look back upon and utilize with my athletes. Yes, you can use some supplementation, but when it comes down to active therapy, again, this is what I like to do for the passive therapy, nutrition, sleep, and then getting with a clinician and getting some soft tissue work done as well. All right, that's the video. Hope you like it. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification, hit the like button. Also, if you wanna learn more of these techniques, if you wanna learn more of my methods and my protocols of training, the systems that I use for my athletes, check out my mentorship down below. It's a one-time fee and you'll get access for life. So check it out, link is in the description and I'll see you on the inside. See you again next time, peace.